Please come and grace to the mystic laws of the universe and its protective functions and forces in nature that guide our thoughts and our part in all ways that are lawful, correct, and positive. We do give thanks and praise. Yeah, to a great spirit, we do give thanks and praise. Most are. Now I was uh, exposing the legal process, the existing banking holiday. You can say the Emergency Banking Act of 1933. Now we say 701B define an action. An action is defined in the chart chapter 7 of the United States Bankruptcy Code as a motion by court or by the United States trustee or by the bankruptcy trustee or by the bankruptcy administrator or any party of interest to dismiss a debtor's case on the ground that granting a relief would constitute an abuse of the provisions of Chapter 7 of the United States Bankruptcy Code. Now, for my local island people, I'm going to say, yo, sovereign mom, the United States Bankruptcy Code have to do with we on the island here. And this sovereign man, this Nestorian king, would respond by saying, the moment you have a central bank, such as the Bank of Jamaica, a central bank, I get its authority from the international bankers, from the very same Rothschild group. It's one and the same. And then um, it has a foundational location right there within the United States of America Corporation. And then fiscal agents say is the United States Corporation are incorporated. And as I have shown where the government of Jamaica was created under the very laws of the same United States. Hence, that corporate entity is issued at Dunn's number as we can present and it's listed as debtor as we can present and has present those evidence. So when you ask the question, what are you do with weep on the island? That is your answer. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of the IMF on your island nation? And do your own basic research at the requirements of that very IMF. And with all of the loans where your island nation get from the IMF, show us the improvement. Where has any of it benefit the people of said island nation? It will benefit the corporate constructs and all of the corporations like SSLs and you know the police service commissions, all of these places will get all kind of fancy equipment, but the people in general, get absolutely nothing at all. No difference from when you're a victim. As a victim, if you're in a divorce case, when you sue your husband or your wife and whatever, whatever, who get the benefit? The state. You know what I mean? So, we have to kind of apply ourselves to get clarity. And this is why we express ourselves with a lot of information in order to bring said clarity. We we'll call it honorable clarification. So because of the banking holiday and the banking emergency, banking act of 1933, everything is bankrupt, everything is what you call insolvent. So every proceeding where to go on within a court case, it's called a Bankruptcy proceeding. 
it's safe to assume uh, we are look at it where you know the United States bankruptcy court it has a, a motion by a court or a United States trustee or a bankruptcy trustee have to be a bankruptcy trustee or a bankruptcy administrator have to be cast our bankruptcy court or any party in interest to dismiss a debtor's case on the ground that granting a relief would constitute an abuse of the provision of Chapter 7 of the United States Bankruptcy Code. Now, we have well learned people and we can even break this down more appropriately. But what we like to do is shine light on information, a show sir, when these people are trying to claim jurisdiction or authority or control. We now go have a problem and rebut them with information. Understand? Rebuke them with information. But there will always be the accusers. When them create them own fictional, get us a creation and I try to entice you or coerce you to participate, then we are fair stand up and rebut all of their presumption with them bring forward. Uh, them have no jurisdiction, whether it's territorial, they can't have territorial jurisdiction as an insolvent corporate agency. And they can't have personal jurisdiction over the money. Uh, they can't purport themselves to the God. So we are sharing information for sure, sir, irrespective of what the caption of anything is or the title. Everything is in a bankruptcy proceeding because the banking holiday is still extant, still a go on. So this is why the mafia have negotiable instruments and this is why, you know, everything is a promise, a promise, promise. And, you know, you give them information as tax return. It's really information so them can zero the, the books or balance the account. And this is from our perspective. So again, all court matters, including my traffic issue here, is actually and factually a bankruptcy proceeding. Now, we are dealing with logic, with reasoning. It's basic. We're now for being a rocket scientist to present this. Just look at the information being presented. And do your own basic research, research the emergency banking act. You can do your own historical research to the foundation, all of that. And then you will see that when I'm saying everything that's been happening, it's been happening in a it has an insolvent capacity, a bankruptcy capacity. This is why them are view you as a debtor. <laughs> yeah, because them change. This is where the synagogue of Satan. You know what I mean? Can I remember them say Satan or the Father are lies. So this is where the subtle deception come in. This is why we talk about silent deception and inducement by fraud or inducement to participate in fraud or fraudulent activities. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, for demonstrate the little knowledge where the most I bestow on us. And just by listening to him and reasoning, on our sister, it's grassroots, it's organic. You know what I mean? It had derived from our perspective, what I'm calling dance, unlearned. You understand we now have no titles behind our name, per se, or corporately. But our brain, work exceptionally well, work just fine. Now, we come across this information, life event. And you hear me talk about life event. I realize that uh, when we do certain things and say certain things, Babylon does take it on. Uh, we are talking about life event from them time, you know, when people say birth certificate and them, you know, date of birth, we say our life event. Or structure documentation accordingly. Yeah, man. And this is why we have to go back to the basics. And when we say go back to the basics, it's an 
their power levels. So it was a live event. And, you know, it's a 341 meeting, 341 meeting. A 341 meeting is a mandatory meeting held at the beginning, right? At the beginning of a bankruptcy proceeding. At the beginning of a bankruptcy proceeding. Now, it's safe to, you know, it has to assume that we are talking about a hearing, any court hearing. So any court hearing, they must say you have to be there. It's a mandatory meeting held at the beginning of a bankruptcy proceeding, also referred to as the creditors meeting. Its name comes from the section 341 of the bankruptcy code. All right. So the mandatory meeting is also called a creditor's meeting. This is why I said the creditor and the debtor are two pieces of the same whole. Yeah, I get it, my common people. We are class. And, yeah, and we self-taught. And this is from our perspective, our point of view. It's open to rebuttal. Yeah, man. So again, my people, we just have to, you know, the cognizance uh, it's all promise out there. It's all acting out there. And they're all actors out there making it a theatre out there. So the public arena is actually a theatre where you have all kind of actors, people. Sound a way, you know. but that is how the truth is. It seems stranger than fiction at times. Yeah, but it, you know, it can change the fact that this is the truth. Yeah, man. <laughs> now, them say the purpose of the meeting is to examine the debtor's financial position and to confirm the facts stated by the debtor in the bankruptcy filing. So when you put a document in a damn court, it's like a bankruptcy filing because it's all a bankruptcy proceeding, I people. And I get the levels. Get the levels, you know. So when we say administrative, adjudicative, examiner, or adjudication, examiner, which is them get themselves titled as judge or anything else, resident magistrate or, you know what I mean, parish court, you know what I mean? Them get themselves these titles because it's their agency. And them develop their own legal standards, alternatively used as rules and regulations, all theirs. <laughs> and really the only thing we apply to us within the constitution is what I'm calling charter, which is actually the Bill of Rights. But that is always the only binding, as it said so, in plain English. This is guarantee and binding upon these people. This is why we talk about Chapter 3, the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, which, you know, restrict the abridgment of our inherent dignity as man. So the Constitution, you people can do all I want, want with it. We talk about the amendment which is contractually binding, for charter is synonymous with contract. I hope my common people are hanging there with me, or with their class, you know, or with their class together. Well, you know, I am the student, totally and completely receptive to learning. I am that student. Yeah, man. So, B. I said, therefore, the debtor must attend the 341 meeting and answer the questions made by the presiding officer, known as judge, on the penalty of perjury. Now, remember, I know, said the debtor, car, this is a creditor's meeting. The mandatory meeting is a creditor's meeting. 
but the debtor must appear. Who is the debtor? Who is the creditor? The creditor and the debtor are two separate pieces of the same thing. Just like how the legal entity, the juridic person, represents the debtor, it also has a creditor side. This is why the issue identifier number with dashes that represent the debtor. Without the dashes, it should represent the credit or the creditor side. This is how simple this thing is without the complexity, without the middleman and the complication. Now, because these bankruptcy public trustees want to double dip and to, they want to reverse the scripts or the rules, this is when the complications come in. This is where the usurpation come in. This is where the fraudulent conduct come in. When you have an administrative clerk underwriting probably my bond as it, it is theirs, when they put up nothing on the table, my own recognizance is from my own surety, which is my own juridic entity, which is the only entity the, 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 the corporate construct can interface with or the agency can interface with. It's that juridic person, the juristic entity, the surety, or that legal person, or that strongman, that sophisticated financial instrument. Yes, it is that complex. However, the most I have a way to make the common people, you know, break down their complexities by way of simplicity. Easily. Naturally. Yeah, man. So see, sir, uh, chapter 7, chapter 12, and chapter 13 cases. The bankruptcy trustee assigned to the case presides the meeting. And in chapter 11 cases, which is a little bit different, a representative of the United States trustee conducts the meeting. So one is assigned to preside over the meeting and one conducts the meeting. A representative conducts the meeting. So it's at a 341 meeting. 341 meeting also aims to help the debtor understand the bankruptcy proceedings. Nobody explain it to you like this. And allows creditors and other interested parties to make questions about the debtor's financial affairs. However, creditors are not required to attend the 341 meeting. Generally, the 341 meeting is scheduled between 20 days and 60 days after the debtor files for bankruptcy. So, the master, the creditor, which the debtor and the creditor, well, the debtor can't speak for itself or the debtor and the juridic person. So, you, as the creditor, have the debtor to direct it, but you have to assume your position. You know what I mean? Where either you are the holder of the legal title, and as the holder and owner, you know what I mean, and beneficiary and grantor, then you have to direct things. And if you don't know, then, you know, Babylon will go redirect everything for you. But we have demonstrated the fact that uh, the birth certificate entities, all them can, you know, interface with. And when them are require anything of such, then we can present that instrument. And that should suffice. However, these people act as if they are, you know, lacking the knowledge of their own legal process. So, uh, we never create it. We have to try, you know, decipher it or cipher it. 
Yeah, I'm on. It says, oh, the bankruptcy trustee may ask discretionary questions relating to the matter of the bankruptcy case. Among others, the trustee, the bankruptcy trustee, will ask at least the following standard questions to the debtor. You get me? Then I'm going to talk to the creditor asking about the debtor, guys. So the, credit, the, the creditor can give information about the debtor. Because the creditor would be a living man. You know what I mean? The physical living man. And the debtor would be the spiritual side of things where are the persona. Where Babylon are trying to administrate and really attach themselves adhesively to secretly. Like a parasite. They, you know? Extract everything from you. This is why we say create a separation of entity. This is why I establish I house, House of Dallas. You understand? And this is why I have my own house seal. You understand? With my society, I work in the nation within that seal. Yeah, and that seal was placed on the public record where more than a year on a day passed represent public law so them can choose to ignore these things but these things are law uh, we are demonstrates that they are far removed from law your legal process does not constitute law unless you consent to it and we do not consent to any foreign rules or any foreign regulations guise as law which is in fact color of law Hope my people are hanging there with us. It's a step by step process, you know. And there is no one on the island you can sort them walk our people through this kind of process. You know what I mean? I bring the information forward and I break it down according to. Our perspective, according to our due diligent search. Yeah, now have nothing to do with what anyone else I deal with. We look for the information presented by the agencies out there. And then we apply ourselves accordingly. So this is what we call grassroots. This is what we call organic. We have to give thanks for all of the truth seekers who present information out there. So, truth seekers such as I said, may have access and compare notes and we share information publicly and accordingly. Yeah, man. Yeah, them can go through them for the debt. All right. This other question. If the address on the petition is the current debtor's address, if the debtor was the person who signed the petition, schedules, statements, and related documents of the bankruptcy filing, remember you now the debtor is supposed to be an artificial construct. However, without you, I present yourself as the creditor. And I give information on behalf of the debtor. Then everything is just mute. You understand? Uh, you can go in the court and say, I am not that debtor. I choose to remain silent so the debtor can take the floor, take the stand, and speak. And then you will just remain silent. <laughs> what do you think would happen then? If them I purport you to be the debtor and you are saying you are not the debtor, so let the debtor stand and represent itself. And you, you do something even more so. You just present the debtor and say, let the debtor speak for itself. Simple. Anyway, our next question is this. If the debtor is familiar with the information contained in the petition, schedule statement, and related documents of the bankruptcy filing, 
if to the best of the debtor's knowledge and information contained in the petition, schedule, statement, and related document of the bankruptcy filing is true and correct, if the debtor identify all its assets and list and list all its creditors in the bankruptcy filing document, if the debtor had previously filed for bankruptcy, some of them things are relevant, but that's why I show no what really are going behind the scenes and how them really are function and why them are function a certain way. Uh, then I talk about the debtor. The debtor is always a surety. And the surety I show you is that piece of paper, that sophisticated financial instrument, the registration form, or certification of vital record. All right. We we'll look at commerce. It's a commerce. 1031 exchange. 1031 exchange, also called tax deferred exchange, referred to the ability of investors and organization to replace one investment for a similar one instead of keeping the proceeds. For certain transactions, the exchange allows the investor or organization to defer capital gain tax until the new investment is actually sold for the proceeds. The initial property typically is sold for money, but this money must be used quickly to acquire a new replacement investment. These deferred exchanges are called 1031 exchanges, which are governed by Section 1031 of the Federal Code Tax, or the Federal Tax Code. Section 1031 requires a new investment to be selected within 45 days. Notice them, them, them capture you off the road and give you a notice of recogn recognizance, which is a bond with them created for 45 days and completed three months' time within 135 days after identification. So, this is why them have me from May to September in a court. But the system. I follow their procedure without knowing the foundation and the root of what's going on. But somebody there like the administrative clerk should be aware of their fraudulent conduct and activity. So we just express it openly. So it should be comprehensive straight across the board. The new property must cost the same amount or more than the original property. And they can acquire multiple similar investments to fulfill the requirements. This is the hypothecation and all of them go on with behind the scenes. The basis for the original investment will be altered to reflect the changes in the exchange of property so that the final capital gain taxes will accurately reflect the gain or loss the investor incurred. The investor incurred. Now, the IDMP and do them such a research and break down accordingly. We touch upon the part and now where they really carry me in this direction in the first place. It's the accounts receivable. I may make my own adjustment according to you don't know our meditation. Accounts receivable, abbreviated AR, is money owed to a business by another business or individual in exchange for property or services that were provided on credit. The settlement of an account receivable begins by sending an invoice to the customer. All right, a company enters an account receivable on the current assets on its balance sheet. For example, your own surety supplies $100,000 as recognizance for a particular performance of service on credit. As soon as the performance of service is satisfied, the company records an account receivable in its books. Once the performance of services is fulfilled in whatever frame set out under the terms of condition, like they want me to show up at court, perform at court, and me show up at court and perform at court. Once that is fulfilled, the account receivable is essentially replaced with cash. So now I want to say why the government agency I give you a one hundred and one hundred thousand dollar recognizance bond and the recognizance bond 
is used as an access device to access your birth bond. Your birth bond was issued from your birth trust. And there is an account, what we would have called unlimited account, because the money we're in it is more than what we can even use for ourselves, probably in our lifetime. You get me? And it's aggregately, and you know, like I just, you alone control 50 odd million or 30 odd million. No, you might have a little 3 point odd million in you know, the safe inside it where it should be coming to you, but so you don't know nothing about it and can't access it. Then it just dead and reappear and you know, them just go fit them back door business accordingly. Uh, you know, no, you know, school for, we never school for these things. It's a self thought. So this is the best we can do right now with the information that we have. And as we move forward, we just demonstrate the rest. <laughs> as with the best. That's all it is out here. But pay attention. Who else on the island presenting anything such as this? Where? Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, I walk in their nation. This is it. This location. Now, this is why them want, that's why I forgot, um, as I think about it, this is because this is going to turn into cash. I want my account receivables. I have to make a claim on this $100,000. So when September 20th case comes, I have this claim I get in there so I can put this money in a non interest bearing account and this should be US dollars. It shouldn't be not Jamaican dollars. So this is the kind of money where these people will kill you for. Literally. Yeah, man. Literally. Believe it. You can touch upon some more information. Shuffle paper. Shuffle paper refers to a document like the birth registration form used in secured transaction to sell property or credit while retaining some interest in the property. Shuffle paper must show a monetary obligation from party A to party B and a security interest or other interest retained in the property by property B. So monetary obligation from property A. So property A can be the surety. See? And the surety can owe you $100 billion. And you are property B. You understand? And you can show that property interest where it's a security interest statement where you put on the public record, say, boy, the surety, you know, or you X, Y, Z. I think we have something like that on the public record. Too. All these things we have to bring forward as, again, we might not follow their formal structure, but we're going to see what we can present out here. Yeah, and it's a wild traditional shuttle papers were physical. UCC section 9-105 authorizes the use of electronic Shuttle paper. So you see, them come right back down to the uniform commercial code. Understand? <laughs> How interesting it, it is. Yeah, man. So you yeah, move from a bankruptcy code to the uniform commercial code. My people sh should be able to keep up, you know? Account debtor. An account debtor is someone who owes an obligation by virtue of an account, shuffle paper, or general intangible. Secured transaction. Secured transaction, a deal in which a buyer or borrower call a debtor. Buyer or borrower call a debtor. Guarantees payment. Guarantees payment on an obligation by giving a security interest in property to the seller or lender called the secured party. So you see when A and B make them, you know, negotiation, then D become the secured party. They are them we get it, car. They are them with the on that level, kind of see what I want. But this are for the basic people. But no, so when you go in a courthouse, everything is bankruptcy. There's no true and real, not now go on. Real. All right, it's so the property in which the security interest exists is called collateral. 
the property in which the security the, the security interest exists is called a collateral. If the buyer or borrower breaches the agreement to pay, the seller or lender may take possession of the collateral or anything else specified by the security agreement. And see if you have a security agreement out there on the public record. And I'm quite sure I might create something like that and spend money and put it on the public record so all these things we can present and bring forward. Security interests. Security interests in someone else's property created by contract or by law. A mortgage is one type of security interest created by contract. A garnishment is one type of security interest created by law. So you see the two you see, distinctions. Secured party, a person in whose favor a security interest is created or provided for under a security agreement regardless of whether an obligation to be secured is outstanding. So, like when we create our thing and put it on the record, we don't know what was one, we don't care about what one, but it's there on the public record. So we have to just present it, so we have a certified copy as such. Yeah, man, so that make us, that make, you know, they are a secured party, naturally. Naturally. Yeah, man. From the documents that we will present on the public record and express ourselves. So now we can really direct people to say, this is what we are doing, this is what it constitutes, this is what it means. You understand? <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. Also, a person that holds an agricultural lien or consigner or someone to whom accounts, shuttle paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes have been sold. So that's a secure party. Anyway, we just want to touch base, you know, on some basic information for sure. So this is what the legal process, not necessarily the system, the legal process is about it's about a bankruptcy proceeding it's all bankruptcy proceeding uh, we're living in a time right now where everything is promised the money what my island people call money is actually uh it has a federal bank note but it was issued from the central bank the bank of jamaica making it a federal bank note and a note is just that promissory note. A promise to pay. It's a negotiable instrument. A negotiable instrument. My likes a negotiable instrument. That's why you have calling money. Yeah, and it's a means of tender. Because everything is fictional. Everything is artificial, really. When it comes on to the financial currency. Now I say your goods and your, and, your, and, your, and your sweat equity, you know, and your products where you create and I provide is not real. May I say the payment structure, the financial structure, the economical structure is fictional. This is why, you know, Babylon people and the Babylonians then you serve or possessions with fictional currency. The China can come and say them buy anything with what? Or them own anything. He will say how? So focus out people. Focus out there. Too many distractions, my people. But focus. Again, give thanks and praise. The brave may fall, but never yield. We are bold and brave, firm and strong, exposing the legal process, which is a bankruptcy proceeding in all its variety. Um, clap it up out there. Nestorian King, give it to them. <laughs>